I am so grateful that you are with us. I pray that you have had an amazing week. That you have felt the hand of God on your life, in your storms, yes, and carrying you through. New Dawn Restoration Center. It is so good to have you joining us on tonight. Y'all, this is Bible Study Revamped. Amen. Oh, man, I'm on a stage, y'all, with our bishop. Bishop, how you feeling over there? I'm doing well. I'm so excited about tonight. I don't know what to do. I pray y'all are enjoying Bible Study Revamped. <laughs> Bible study revamp, y'all. This is this is uh, a, a new format for us, and we're just going to really enjoy it. We're going to take time to really ask some of the key questions and really dive into the Word. If you were with us on Sunday, it was a powerful Word. Bishop preached about walking with God, and we're going to dive in, into that in just a little bit. But I want to give you some preliminaries, get those out of the way so we can get right into our service. If you're joining us, if you're new to joining us, you're a visitor, we thank you so much for sharing with us yes. today. Let us know. Just say, I'm a visitor. Not trying to put you out there, but the saints want to say hello to you. So put in the comments, I'm a visitor, and you'll get a lot of love right away. Want to encourage you, saints of God, to be faithful. Continue to be faithful in your giving. Um, you can give several ways, and by now you probably know those ways. We'll put it up on the screen so you can see that. 
But we want to make sure you're being faithful with your giving. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, so much. thank you for tuning in week after week, sharing with us, you all. It is a blessing to see all of your posts and all of the interaction that happens. Continue to do that, saints of God. This is an important message, an important interaction, an important conversation. So I'd like you to do me a favor and share this broadcast. Hit that share button. Share with all of your Facebook friends, and let's just have a great time, y'all. I hope you're ready for what we're about to get into, saints of God. I got the bishop up here with me, y'all, so you know it's about to be good. Hey, man, we're going to get right into it in just a second. Uh, one more time, I want to just say God bless you to all of you joining us. Uh, y'all, let's, let's continue to pray for our country, continue yes. to pray for others. So much is happening in our world today, and we need the Lord more than we've ever needed. We need the Lord. So... All right, saints of God, it is time for us to get into Bible study <laughs> revamped. Amen. Oh, my goodness. This interaction just blesses my life, being able to sit and, and, and be comfortable and discuss the Word of yes. God and break it down, Mother. So I, I pray that uh, you all feel comfortable in your place. It's comfortable enough to interact and, and share your comments and your questions and things like that. So let's jump right into this thing. Walking with God. My Bishop, Lord. you did you I ain't gonna say you did your best preaching on Sunday, but you <laughs> you you was preaching on Sunday, mother. You was preaching. And uh, God. I, I must say I've never heard Enoch preach like that. So mm. so uh, I'm ready to dive right into it. Now, this thing, this new series, this new series that we're in is called Unlikely Heroes. Yes. Unlikely Heroes. Now, when I think of a hero, you know, I think of of Superman, I think of Batman, and I know that heroes, they always have at least one superpower. At least one superpower. My, my. And so Enoch is our hero that we're talking about tonight. Mother, what would you say is Enoch's superpower? That is an awesome question. Enoch's superpower was the ability to obey. Oh, wow. That was his superpower. Oh, my goodness. The ability to obey. And, and just like kryptonite gave Superman his power, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost gave Enoch his. <laughs> oh. And so he had a power too, and he was converted not in a phone booth, oh, but he was now. converted in his life, and mm. he, was, he chose to obey the Lord. Mm. That was his superpower. Mm. And you know, the scriptures tell us, saints of God, obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, yeah. And so to have the power to obey is a supernatural power. Yeah, yes. I like that. Yes. I like that. And that makes him a hero. And that made God smile. Mm. Having the power to obey. Wow, makes you a hero. So, so describe what a hero is, just in general, a hero, mm -hmm. and how God makes heroes out of unlikely people. Mm -hmm. um, a hero is a person typically that's noted for some courageous act and or uh, nobility of character. A hero is typically, um, uh, sometimes they have special achievements or, or um, they, they have done something, uh, I hate to, you don't describe a word with the word, so I won't say heroic efforts, but some um, achievement has occurred that is uh, oftentimes it, it, it affects humanity. Oftentimes it affects us in our, in our senses of emotion and in our senses of appreciation, um, i.e. a good Samaritan rescuing um, someone from a car accident um, is noted as a hero. Um, a person of, of, of great character, a Barack Obama, is noted as a hero, um, a, although he has several achievements as well, but character can elevate you to hero heroism. Um, and so, and, so, and I, I talked about on Sunday, heroes, many of them are made in a moment, Many of them are made over a lifetime. Ah. So when the Good Samaritan runs across the street and, and saves someone from a burning car, he, that hero was made in a moment. Wow. John Lewis was made in a lifetime. Wow. Serving humanity over a lifetime. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow. In fact, he told us that good trouble takes time. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> good trouble takes time. Oh, my yes. goodness. That, yes. that. And so, so the notion of unlikely heroes, though, mm -hmm. take us into that. How, yeah. like, how, so, how do you get to this place with this, with this sermon series, yes. uh, unlikely heroes? Yes, because what fascinates me about that is that God makes heroes out of unlikely people. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the word makes, you have to look at what does he do. 
Okay. And, and heroes are made by God when they have an encounter with his grace. Ooh, mother, come on now. That's where they, they're the an unlikely with his grace. has an encounter yeah. with Shut God's up. grace. My God. Yeah, they're unlike. That's why many of you all are heroes and you don't know it. You've had an encounter with God's grace. Oh, my goodness. And now that gives you the ability to further the gospel. Oh, my goodness. And you become a hero in a lost person's life. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Goodness. We often wait on preachers and pastors and evangelists to do this. No, if you've been converted mm -hmm. and you've had an encounter with God's grace, mm -hmm. you now qualify as a hero. Oh, my god. And goodness. somebody is waiting for you to mm. produce a heroic effort oh, in their life. Mother, mother, mother yeah. now. Don't be a hero and never produce. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, my god. Don't have heroic supernatural powers oh, that you never use. That you never produce. That's right. Oh, don't miss your moment. Don't miss Jeez. your moment. Don't. Oh, that's good. <laughs> don't miss your moment. Don't miss your moment. That is so encouraging because, you know, a lot of times you think about heroes and you think about... A lot of people don't see uh, that they have something, you know, they, they have a gift or they have something that they can do. Yes. But this, this series is so encouraging because the way that you just described that, the, the, you have an encounter with God's grace qualifies you for, for heroism. Absolutely. Uh, 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 Imagine it. Many of us come from um, uh, less than uh, um, um, mentionable backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Many of us don't like to talk about our backgrounds, but mm. our backgrounds is what brings us to foreground. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so the worse it was, or the, the more despicable it may have been, or mm -hmm. the more controversial it may have yeah. been, mm -hmm. the greater the opportunity for God to show what he can do. Yeah. And so he puts you in a trophy case. Yeah. Yeah, because you are his workmanship. Ooh, goodness gracious. And so he, he, he does the work in you. For what? Not for you to just sit in the case, but for you to show off mm -hmm. in the life of someone who needs just what you needed. Oh, my goodness. That's where this scripture comes from. Um, and he's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. What he's done for one, he does for another. Mm -hmm. So that makes it hero. hero um, it, it gives us a sense of uh, uh, heroism uh -huh. because we let somebody know, but for the what? The grace what? of okay. God. Come All on right. in here. <laughs> Goes me. So I'm looking Woo! at me, but I found the grace. Oh, <laughs> if I not coming to an, had an encounter with the grace, I'd still be right there where you are. But I had that encounter, so now I know that you can get out. Wow, you can have it too. Now I become your hero. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. There you have it, saints. You are a hero. <laughs> you are a hero. In case you didn't know, that is that's what you are. That's you, right. You had an encounter with God's grace. You're a hero. You're a hero. Mother, talk about the cost to oh, walking with God. Well, first of all, the cost of walking with God, what, what is it going to cost me? Everything. Everything. It's going to cost you everything. And there's no avoiding that. And so, and so many people will say, uh, the, and I thought about this when I was writing this sermon, many people will say, I've been walking with God a long time. Heard it, yep. Um, yep. And I believe that's the equivalent to I've been in church a long time. Oh, my, my Lord. Come on and clarify, Mother. There's a difference in being in church a long time and walking with God a long time. Mm. Walking with God, literally, as I said the other uh, on Sunday, it's, go it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cost you everything. It's, it's going to cost you relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you a few. It'll cost you relationships. What do you mean, Bishop? It means, it means the Bible says that, that um, uh, it speaks against being unequally yoked. And so it's very difficult to connect with people who are not walking where you are. How can two walk together unless they, they agree? agree. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to cost you some relationships that you might have thought were okay. Mm -hmm. um, but then you find, and many Christians find the same thing. When you start moving towards your purpose, you find that relationships matter differently. Mm -hmm. Some people, and, and, and listen, to everything there's a season. And so when we make that commitment to Christ to follow him, things ought to change. Mm -hmm. Conversations ought to change. Relationship, proximity ought to change. All kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's going to cost you some relationship. It's going to cost you time. Yeah. It's going to cost you tremendous time and energy to serve other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's what this is all about. That's what makes Enoch a hero. He submitted to that. Amen. He, he, he submitted to that. We, we just recently lost a giant in the kingdom. A giant, my heart aches because that kind of commitment 
to the things of God and the cause of Christ is rare. We believe going to church constitutes walking with God. Untrue. Walking with God means making some, some sacrifices in some places. It means that you're going to be misunderstood. You know, because when you hold on to what's right and your flesh buddies want what's wrong, you're often misunderstood. Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, but following God, as we talked about a few weeks ago in, um, in, in one of the sermons that I talked about, when we, uh, in Check Yourself, we were talking about um, um, this whole notion of, of understanding that believing is hard work. Yeah. So you got to put in the work yeah. of believing. And the work of believing is manifested in the work of living. Mm. And everybody doesn't understand that. Oh, my goodness. So I'm not going to put in the work of believing to negate living just because your flesh wants another response. Come on now. So you sacrifice a lot. You're often misunderstood. You're, you can be lonely. It can cost you your dreams. I talked about when you dream for yourself one thing and God dreams another. Walking with God. But I promise you, the old folk put it like this, serving the Lord. Will, will pay, pay off. off after a while. It'll pay Come off in, in this time now, too. Come on now. It, it'll pay off. You said something uh, in the sermon on Sunday. You said many folks want the crown, but not the cross. That's right. Oh, my goodness. That's mother. right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Want is... the crown, but not the cross. Want to sing in the choir, but don't want to rehearse. Yeah. Want to preach, but don't want to uh, prepare. Oh, my yeah. goodness. The cost. Men, the cost. Mm. The cost. And it, it's, it's the gospel truth. And we, we've got to know that serving the Lord will cost you. Following Christ will cost you. We'll profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. And so we're not after the materialism. We're not after that. We're after pleasing God, which is what Enoch did. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, Mother, people have a hard time uh, dealing with the cost? Why do, you, why do you think people have a hard time, um, you know, we, we don't always know up front what the cost is going to be. And we hear, so we hear, we hear that there's a high cost, uh -huh. but... Some people could hear that, right, and be like, I, I don't know if I got enough for that, you yes, know? Yes. So how do you encourage somebody after hearing that there's a high cost and they may feel like, I don't, I, I don't know if I can pay that cost? Well, the cost is paid through obedience. Number one, the cost has already been paid. Christ paid it. And so when we believe on him, when we, when we um, crave him, over the things of the world, then he instills, imputes in you the imputed righteousness of Christ to give you the ability. All you have to do is receive it, and Come then you now. can walk in it. Mm -hmm. So it's no work on your part mm. except for obedience mm. and reception of uh, receptivity of mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. he has imputed into you mm -hmm. and, and the understanding and knowledge of knowing that if any man be in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. So you may not have been able to withstand it before, mm -hmm. but now you're a new creation. So yeah. we don't talk about the old because everything is becoming new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier and you were talking about practicing obedience. Yes. I think that was key. Can you, can you kind of share with the saints about Absolutely. practicing and making it a habit? And Absolutely. I think, it, I think we were chatting and you asked me something about how does a person grow into this kind of walk? as Enoch did. Yeah. And, and, I, and I suggested to him, and I'll suggest to you, that when we are converted, we begin to practice the things of God. You start practicing, but at some point, practice becomes habitual. And then at another point, habit becomes lifestyle. Yeah. And so it is a progression. Sanctification is a progression. Mm-hmm. Amen. So you have to work out your soul salvation. Mm -hmm. You have to work it out with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. So I was suggesting to Pastor Tony that we can be very practical about this. Every week I can say, this week I'm going to work on this. I know that doesn't please God. The Bible says this does. So this week I'm going to work on this. You work on it. You practice it. You're successful with it. Then you go, wow, this really works. Yeah. And then it becomes habitual. And then it becomes lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And the more we practice and the more we receive that the habits are changing, here we go, the more our life begins to be transformed. It is work, and we have to be intentional about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I like that. It, it is definitely work. Uh, you definitely have to, to work it out. It That's right. It is not for the faint in heart. It's, it's not. not. 
anything easy, um, but you definitely have to, you got to work. That's right. You, you talked about uh, an enduring strength. Mm. Uh, and, and you're talking about staying with God. Can you help us with, with, <laughs> with that, that kind of staying power? <laughs> that. Yeah, that really jumped out at me. In the text, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God for some 300 years. He pleased him. And so when I saw that, the Lord leaped right out. He stayed with God. Yeah. And, 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 and I think the reason why that resonated with me so deeply is because so many stay in the church but don't stay with God. Oh. Mother, come on now. And that's the pathetic part. Oh that is my the goodness. that is the part that brings such contradiction to the kingdom of God. Stay in the stay church. in the church, but don't stay with God. Wow. And so Enoch stayed with God. We have to have this enduring strength. The word enduring, endurance itself, means to get under and bear the weight. Yeah. And so the weight of offense, wow. the weight of disappointment, mm. the weight of discouragement, the weight of of of, uh, of rebuke. The weight of that, we get under it. The weight of correction, we get under there and we bear it. Yeah. And that's what matures us yeah. as we carry and as we endure. That's what this is not given to the swift, wow. but to them that will endure. Yeah. So people stay in church mad at somebody because they got offended and stuff. The Bible has given us the way to handle that. Mm -hmm. That what we're no longer carrying the weight. Get this off me. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. But yet I stay in the church yeah. and bring contradiction to the kingdom of God. Yeah. 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 Goodness gracious. That, yeah. yeah, enduring strength. We need it, saints of God, enduring strength. Yeah, man, man. And, and you, you said many people uh, stay in church but don't stay, stay with, God. with God. But mm -hmm. you got many of them that, that, um, that lead the church and leave God. That's right. And, 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 and in, pandem in times of pandemic, in times of not understanding, there's a lot of people Falling off. I think that term is called apostasy. apostasy. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. 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 A lot falling. Of, yeah. Falling. Falling off. Um. Because we we deal. We don't have the strength to stay. That's right. And I think that's a, a really crazy. You called it out. Uh, three hundred years. He stayed with God. He stayed many, with God. But many of us don't stay with him for three hundred uh -uh. days. Because we 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 <laughs> we faint under the spirit of doubt. We faint under the spirit of disappointment. We faint under the spirit of drift. We faint under the spirit of rules and independence and offenses and all that kind of stuff, which is, by, it, which by the way, is 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 a tool for God to strengthen you, but it's also a tool in the hands of the enemy to drive you away. Ooh, don't misunderstand and, and un, the tool. Don't misunderstand the tool oh. and don't misunderstand who formed it. Oh, my goodness. And so the in deceit. So it's <laughs> deceit. Everything is wrapped up in deceit. My perception is completely off. Wow. And without investigation... I receive a lie as a lie, yeah. and I drift. Yeah. I fall away. Yeah. We're in a pandemic. God, can you, is this, are you here? Are you here? Are you there when God, what do you do when God seems silent? You get under and you bear it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. You stay true to what you know. I said that a few weeks ago. Yeah. You stay true to what you know. You hold on to what you know, mm -hmm. and God will certainly will speak. He's already speaking. You just don't hear him because you don't know how to listen this way. Yeah. But you have to listen in a new way. I believe even in the pandemic, he's speaking to us in different ways. And I believe that we're learning him according to different names. That's a whole nother Bible study. We're learning a whole lot more about who he is. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people can't get past what they see, though. And yes. I think that's the problem. Is that's right. We, instead of opting on, acting on what we know, we, we look at what we see because we see it, we feel it, and, 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 and we lose it. And as as, uh, as Bishop McCullough told us a few weeks ago, when we were when we were studying the, um, uh, 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 it wasn't adoption. It was it was it might have been the the, the uh, spirit sanctification. sanctification or adoption. One of the doctrines. But she told us she said this is not about what you feel. It's oh, about what good. you know. That's good. Yeah. This, uh, Christianity is not about what you feel. Yeah. It is not about what you feel at all. It's about what you know. Which is why we have to teach people that your feelings, are your, these feelings that you elude to are based on the fact that your encounter with grace has not been defined. Oh, and you don't understand goodness. grace. You don't understand oh, uh, this, this whole notion of sanctification and salvation. You don't understand the doctrine mm -hmm. that grounds you. Mm -hmm. And that's why people flighty. Mm -hmm. That's why they flighty. Mm -hmm. They don't have a found Their foundation is unsure. Mm -hmm. And a foundation that's not built on doctrine is going to cause you to lose flight. You either fight or flight. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think that's a lot of, that ties into a lot of relationships today. Mm -hmm. You look at Enoch's relationship as right. faithfulness in his walk with God, but you see marriages fall apart because they ain't got no flight. No flight. They ain't got no staying power. No staying power. Mm -hmm. And Enoch stayed 300 years. Yeah. He stayed. Yeah. And that just blessed my life in the study, in the study of him because he's, his w walking with God means we're growing in God. Oh, that's good. Who wants to leave a God you're growing in? Oh, that's good. Oh, my goodness. Who wants to leave the principles of the faith that have delivered you mm -hmm. from the detriment of the world? Mm -hmm. Who wants to leave that mm -hmm. except somebody who ain't growing? You're right. Because they lead the church because they, they lead growing. the church because they're not growing. And if I said <laughs> the other day, if you're not intentional about your growth in God, you will drift. You will drift. You will drift. Mm -hmm. you, 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 have no, you have nothing to hold you. You will drift. It's like being in the ocean. The sand is, is not sure. You yeah. will drift. Drift. You will drift. Waves will take you where they want to. Yeah. 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 And the world will too. Yeah. If you, and if you don't have that enduring, that in, if you're not growing in God, I'll say that. If you're not growing in God, um, nothing about you is going to grow or produce anything. Nothing. Uh, pleasing God produces the fruit of a transformed life. You said that on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Pleasing God produces the fruit of a transformed life. Yes, it does. Can you break that down for us? Pleasing yeah. God. It absolutely does. Pleasing God produces the fruit of a transformed life. So, so when I'm pleasing God, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I have brought my sins before him. Mm -hmm. Against thee and thee alone have I sinned. Yep. Uh -huh. I've, done the, I've done the work of uh, David in Psalm 51. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, on my bed, Psalm 32, my bones wax cold, yep. or wax old on my bed when I think about my mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. So you've done the work of yeah. that. You continue to do the work of that. You don't try to hide it. You know that these transgressions and these sins and this iniquity that is on your life must be dealt with. So that's a person who's pleasing God, right? Another, another way we please him is our faith. And a person of strong faith, growing faith, learning faith, wanting to, understanding that faith is the substance of things hoped for and not seen. I don't have to see to believe. Blessed are they who believe and don't see. Uh -huh. We just talked about doubt a few weeks ago. Somebody get it. Put the hands in the side. Do what? Do you, okay. So, so blessed are they who believe but don't, uh, uh, but don't have to see. Yeah. Right? And so a person of strong faith pleases God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Enoch pleased God. That was, that was his reputation. Enoch did, let me say this, he's a hero that did not have a long resume. Enoch did not have a long resume. I did this in 1989. I did this in 1992. <laughs> I did this in 95 and so forth. He did not have a long resume. Enoch's, the description of Enoch and the epitaph read, he pleased God. What a wonderful, because when you think about what it entails to please God, all right, what a stellar life. Yeah. And, so, and so that's what he did. Mm -hmm. He pleased God. His faith was, 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 was admirable. Mm -hmm. His walk was admirable. His commitment was admirable. His integrity was admirable. Those are the things that all of us saints of God have the privilege of doing. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have a degree to do that. Come on, mother. I have to have a will to obey. Come on now. Not even no title. Not even I don't a title. have to have no title to do that. <laughs> I don't have to be no elder. I don't have to wear no collar to obey. Come yeah. on here. Yeah. And just because I wear one doesn't mean I obey. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the biggest contradiction. And so Enoch pleased the Lord. And he chose to please the Lord over man. Yeah. Now, that was huge. Yeah. And I gave several scriptures on Sunday about uh, 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 what the Bible says about that. Too many people want their affirmation from man and not from God. Enoch pleased God. Oh, and when God. I told you Sunday, when you please God, you please man. Yeah. That's just a lesson that people have to learn. Yeah. If you're pleasing God, you're pleasing man. Yeah. If God is glorified, all else is satisfied. So pleasing God is really the, should be the goal of the believer. It's the goal. It has to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think many times we, even some of us saints, get caught up in pleasing ourselves. Yes. Doing things that's in our best interest that we think, yes. you know, and, and trying to fill that void of pleasing ourselves or yes. pleasing others. Yes. I, I remember you talked, you helped me with 
um, when you preached about people pleasing. People pleasing. That yes. just transformed my life because yes. that's who I always been. My Lord. You know, all my life. And and and, and I got delivered in that message, uh -huh. Mother. Praise so God. that people pleasing is, is definitely oh, what it'll a word. run you ragged. Yes, it will. Mm -mm. It will. Because you can never please them. Nope. You can't. Nope. You can never please them. Again, that is going to take you all the way back to the doctrine of adoption. Yeah. You can never please man. Man cannot please man. Only yeah. God has what you need. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so he's called us into his own. We're his sons and his daughters. And God can supply all of our needs. Yeah. Man cannot do that. Yeah. You will lose relationships. They will be broken. They'll be uh, battered. They'll be uh, keep you in bondage at best. Mm -hmm. If your life is lived trying to please people. Because today I want a diamond, tomorrow I want a car. Yep. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. the, the smell of the new car does go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does fade. It's fascinating day one, mm -hmm. but it does go away. And we vacillate like that. Yeah. So, you, you know, we're not created to please one another and to make one another happy. Yeah. We're not created to do that. Yeah. God has made provision mm -hmm. for our growth and our development and therefore our fulfillment in life. You know, in the presence of God is the fullness of Some joy. people set their whole life up on that, though, yes. on pleasing other people. Yes, they do. Like, that is, that is the, the uh, objective goal of it. But that's, that's, that is a different way of seeing it. It's a trap, too. It's a trap. Because if, if you're pleasing man, you cannot please God. Woo. You cannot. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. If you seek to please man over God, you cannot please God. Set the God. captives free, Bishop. You Set can't do it. You can't do it. You because because you because because in pleasing God, what does, I mean, in pleasing man, what does that mean? That means that somebody wants you shaped in another mold. Mm. Oh and so my. you cannot be pressed into another person's mold for your life. Oh my. You know how that little clay we used to play with? Mm -hmm. You know, they want to just reshape you to yep. fit me. I want to reshape you. No, before you were formed in your mother's room, oh, I already my. knew who you were. Mm. So it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a battle. You can't, you mm -hmm. can't please them both. You mm -hmm. cannot do it. We seek to please God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its right and everything else. Mm -hmm. that, it follows. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work in the reverse. Yeah. Please God, you'll please man. Yeah. 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 And if you're pleasing God, and you're not pleasing this person, it's because they are not with God. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, that'll oh. help you to know who oh with him my. and who ain't. <laughs> That's why he said separate the wheat and the test. Don't you worry about oh it. I'll do it. Oh, my goodness. Because we all look alike. Oh, my Till you goodness. get to the foundation, the only part of the house that no one sees. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but when the storms came and the winds blew, <laughs> <laughs> this one stood oh. and that one did not. Same neighborhood. The houses look just alike. Foundation's different. Wow. Wow, yep. wow, wow. You can't please him. You, you, you'll never be able to please man. That's why you can't be unequally yoked. You cannot be. Yep. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the Bible clearly speaks against that. Wow. wow. Only when we crave Christ <laughs> will our bondage for craving the approval of man be broken. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. <laughs> First of all, the word crave means insatiable appetite. Uh huh. It means to have a, an insatiable longing for. So if I crave, if I'm, if I read the statement that I made again, read it okay. to me one more time. Only when we crave Christ will our mm -hmm. bondage for craving the approval of man be, be broken. Be broken. So as I crave Christ, he fills me. So Paul says daily I must mortify, mortify this flesh. Mm -hmm. Here I am, an empty, vessel, an empty vessel standing before a full fountain, what, waiting mm -hmm. to be filled. Mm -hmm. So as, I'm, as I crave Christ, I'm being filled with the things of God. Wow. I'm being filled with his character. Mm -hmm. I'm being filled with his mind. And it's pushing flesh out. Yeah. It's pushing my desire to please some man mm -hmm. out. It's pushing mm -hmm. all of that out. All that's being just pushed mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. And he's teaching me how to love right. He's teaching me because he's filling me with his love. Mm -hmm. And now his love transfers to this these people. Yeah. And it ain't got nothing to do with pleasing them. My oh my goodness. That's our problem. Oh our content my our, our our understanding of love. Is yeah. completely it's off. Off kilter. Yeah. That's our. That's uh huh. That's the problem. We thought we we many people were raised to believe that if I if I make you happy, mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. If I keep a smile on your face, I love you. Yeah. What happens when I when I don't? What happens when I don't? That's when disappointment comes. That's when doubt comes. That's when how could you let me down? That's when unnecessary offenses come. Insecurities pop out. All of that mm -hmm. because you're not designed to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -mm. Learn how to love God. Mm -hmm. You got to learn, learn how to love vertically mm -hmm. before you can ever love horizontally. Yeah. Yeah. So when that vertical is off, yeah. horizontal is jacked. Oh, yeah. You, you, you can't. And, and people that are in church are not necessarily walking with God. You must walk with God as Enoch did to have the proper vertical so you can have proper horizontal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and you don't have horizontal and then put them vertical. <laughs> no, you got to go back and check the whole thing. You got to everything over this way is wrong. Everything that way is wrong. You've got to get it right this way yeah. so that you can extend. Yeah, there's another scripture that puts me in the mind of, of what you said. It says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He He'll will give, give you, you the desires of your heart." So, so delighting yourself in the Lord means that I am walking with God. Yeah. Because to delight yourself in the Lord means that I am obeying his statutes. It means that I'm trusting in his word. Mm -hmm. It means that I'm reading, I'm meditating on him day and night. Mm -hmm. I shall be like a tree that's planted by the water. Everything yeah. my hands touch shall yeah. prosper. Yeah. That's what delighting in the Lord means. Yeah. And as you delight in the Lord, as he's filling you, mm -hmm. right, as you're craving him, mm -hmm. he's changing you. Yeah. So the things you used to crave, you don't crave no more. Yeah. The things you, he's putting in you what he wants you to crave. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You might have craved alcohol. Now you crave his word. Wow. That ain't because of nothing you did. It's the grace of God that's been washing you and filling you with his desires for you so that your purpose can be fulfilled. I'm glad you explained that because a lot of people see that scripture and they, they immediately go to the Lord's going to fulfill my deepest fantasies, mm -hmm. my deepest desires, and they mm -hmm. totally miss that point that he mm -hmm. gives you, the closer you walk with him, the longer you walk with him, the more you stay with him. That's right. He will put in you the desires that it takes to please him. That's exactly right. Wow, the, wow, The wow. desires to please him. Yeah. Because remember, it's all about forming and shaping and molding and making you so that his purposes for you, yeah. which is a part of his redemptive plan, yeah. can be fulfilled. Yeah. 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 It has nothing to do with your desires. Mm -mm. Desires are of the flesh. And for any of you that wrestle with that, get the series on pulling up distracting weeds because desires is one of them. Yeah. It's a distraction. It's a tool and a ploy Ooh. of the enemy Oh my! to have you way off kilter. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Ah, it's a distraction, yeah. It's a distraction. Yeah, and when you are wrapped up into your own desires, you You miss become your own distraction. You, you become your own? <laughs> oh, mother. You are a distraction oh. to yourself. Oh, my goodness. Forget you're everything else. You're a distraction. Else. You're, you're keeping you distraction. from being online and, and to, on target. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Self-sabotage. Self self Don't need nobody else. Don't need no help. Mm. You're keeping yourself mm. from being who God called you to be. Mm. But again, as as it you know, as as, as I'm gonna talk about next week, you got this you got this protected interpretation. <laughs> A protected interpretation. interpretation of yourself. Oh my! It's self sabotage. Oh my goodness! And 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 so you fall into the category of double minded. That's exactly because what it is. Because the Bible is. says a double-minded man is what is unstable and, uh, and, and <laughs> what and cannot what receive nothing. Let's say it again. No, you cannot receive nothing, nothing from the Lord. Nothing from the Lord. You can't even receive His desires. You can't. Yeah. You can't receive the transformative desires. Oh, you can't goodness. even receive it. Wow. You a song cannot make you desire God. No. He's got to change your desires. Yeah. He'll give you the desire only when you delight. Yeah. In him. Yeah. That is his law. Yeah. Delight in his law, his word, his commands. That's wow. right. That's what Enoch did. Wow. You got to love God telling you no. Mm. My God. You got to love God sending you another way. Ooh, isn't that hard? You got to love not knowing what God is doing. Oh, my goodness. Such is the life. Mm. <laughs> Many of us don't know how to operate when it's unknown. That's or, right. Or when God is quiet. That's right. We, 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 we answer the question for him because mm -hmm. uh, we want him to say something and give us directions. Sometimes we don't hear him and we just step out there That's before right. him and then we mess it all Come up. Come on, I'm going to go on and, and, and have sex with the handmaiden and have his child because yep. I don't trust mm -hmm. what God said. Mm -hmm. Or you just seem too far away. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. We're going to fulfill that yeah. promise. Our own desires. Yeah. Going to fulfill our own desires. Mm -hmm. I want a child, so I'm going to have, you know, with the handmaiden. I forget where that comes from, Hannah and Samuel somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how important, Mother, is it to stick with the message God has given you? We know Enoch preached the truth. 
Enoch preached the truth. And on Sunday, I shared with us that Jude reveals what Enoch's message was um, about God's judgment and about um, um, God's um, wrath mm -hmm. and about the fact that God will come and God will repay. Mm -hmm. Vengeance does really belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so that was Enoch's message, mm -hmm. right? That was Enoch's message. So when, I'm, when we talk about um, uh, how Christ is revealed, answer, ask the question to me one more time so I can answer it just like How that. important yeah. is it to stick with the message St God? Stick with what God gave you. Because what's important about that is Enoch gained power in his preaching. Yeah. Because he was preaching the message God gave him. Yes. Enoch had transfer in his preaching because yes. he was living mm -hmm. the message God gave him. Yeah. Enoch had authority in his preaching because he was, he was living and mm -hmm. walking out what God gave him. Mm -hmm. He didn't try to preach another prophet's message. Yeah. He preached the one God gave him. My God. And that, that's the mantle that was on his mm -hmm. life was mm -hmm. justice. Mm -hmm. The mantle that was on his life mm -hmm. was righteousness. Mm -hmm. The mantle that was on, and isn't that the way he lived? Mm -hmm. He walked with God. Yeah. And so when you're walking with God, you hear God. Yeah. Now, now the whole lot of saints will tell you, the Lord is saying to me, the Lord ain't said that to you. That's not how the Lord speaks. Come on, Come on somebody. Come on. Now, I know I'm going to get, don't text me, don't email me on this, <laughs> don't do it. Just go in prayer. But here's what I'm, I'm getting ready to say. The, the God is a God of order. He's a God of order. And so, and so when he speaks to a sheep, he's already spoken to the shepherd. But a sheep can't get out the flock and come back. This is what the Lord said, and the shepherd ain't never heard nothing. That's oh, not how my. God speaks. Mm. But many people use that. You know, the Lord spoke because what are you going to say to somebody that says, the Lord said this to me? Yeah. But if you're walking with God, when you walk with God in, 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 in obedience like Enoch did, mm -hmm. pleasing God and staying with God, and even through the hard times and bearing the weight of endurance, when you're walking with God, you're going to hear God. God gives you a message. Yeah. That's the message you are to share. Yeah. He gives you a mantle. That's the mantle you are to share. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folk used to ask me, why do you preach so much about character? Probably because I'm walking it. Yeah. Probably because he, he, he breathes it in me. It's 24 hours a day. This season that we're in in our country is annoying to me. Mm -hmm. I've never seen such debauchery yeah. and such moral decline. Yeah. It, is, it is amazing to me how people can be crooks right in your face and there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. It is uh, just amazing to me. Yeah. So I'm just seeking the Lord mm -hmm. for what we are to learn mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. This is an exposure of, 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 um, of moral decline like I've never seen before. It is. And, and so, but for a person like me, it, it, I mean, it's like, I can't take it. If I walk through my house and TR um, UMP's name comes up, I'm just does something to me. I'm just like <laughs> torn up. I'm just like, oh, oh, I'm in the house with evil. I, that has, somebody got to go and it yep. ain't me. Yep. You got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I just can't take it. Yep. And, and it's, a, it's a cry. It's heavy. It's a weight. Mm -hmm. That's why he's given me the burden to preach it. That's why he's giving me the birth, because there's going to be power with it. Why? Because you live. You cannot preach above your life. Yep. You, you cannot preach what you yourself don't do. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't preach faith and you ain't got none. You, you can't preach integrity and you live in double-minded. Nope. You can't do it. He gives power in the message that he gives you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You said something years ago about... Uh, uh, making decisions, and it, this isn't like spot on in terms of uh, backing up what you just said, but I'm just remembering uh, how, how you mentioned uh, your last voice shouldn't be the voice you go your with. Your own. Your own. <laughs> if your own voice is your last voice you hear, there's a problem with you. A, you don't want counsel. Yeah. yeah. And there's safety in counsel. Yeah. There's safety. And when I say counsel, I don't mean that somebody's laying on the couch and you trying to help somebody figure out. I mean being able to talk things through, to make sure that you're on point with, with God. You make sure that what you thought you heard is confirmed because God will confirm it. Yes. He, he did tell the little 14-year-old girl, you're going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And you ain't been with him. Yep. And then cousin Elizabeth comes and confirms confirm. it. He will confirm for absolutely. you. Absolutely. He will absolutely confirm for yep. you. And we cannot be afraid mm -hmm. of the confirmation. What we're afraid of is not the confirmation. We're afraid of the fact that we didn't hear. Ooh. Oh, 
in the first place. Oh, my goodness. Because you ought to seek confirmation before you move forward. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah. So if the last voice you hear is your own, Mm -hmm. that means you trust yourself for your own decisions. Because God has put us in the earth Mm -hmm. with counsel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ain't going to be no power in that message. Yeah. None. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's completely selfish and completely self-serving. Stick with the message God has given you. Stick with what he's given you. That's why you ought not try to be nobody else. Stick with the message God (laughs) has given you. Because that's where your power lies. That's where he's going to manifest himself, and that's where the deliberate transfer that he's intended for is going to happen. If he's giving you, saints of God, the message of encouragement, don't try to preach the message of prophecy. Come on. If he's giving you the message of love, stick with it. Stick with it. If he, uh, which one of them did, did it preach? The only sermon he ever preached was repent. The time is at hand. Yeah. So if that's what he gives you, that's what you preach. Yeah. He puts a mantle on your life for leadership, lead. Mm-hmm. That's what you, you, woe is me is what Paul said. Woe is me. Paul taught character. He's known for that. He's known for correcting. He's known for that. And that's what he did. And that's why he's so powerful. Yeah. An unlikely hero, too. Mm-hmm. My God. <laughs> mm-hmm. God used him for that. He used all of that. Unlike the hero, the Unlike. great the great reversal. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, I think this is a good this is a good <laughs> question I want to ask you, Mother. Okay. How is evidence of walking with God demonstrated in the message we preach? Because similar to what I just said in piggybacks right on that. How is evidence of walking with God demonstrated in the message we preach? Because God speaks. The songwriter says, and he walks with me, Mm -hmm. and he talks with me, Mm -hmm. and he tells me I am his own. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm walking in the cool of the garden, Mm -hmm. and God speaks. Mm -hmm. When we preach, people don't hear you, they hear God. Come on. If people are hearing you, this is nothing but performance. Yeah. Oh my. People goodness. ought to hear God. Yeah. Something ought to break. Yeah. Yeah. Something ought to be confirmed. Something ought to be confirmed. Yep. Something ought to change. Mm-hmm. Something ought to happen, which is why I say often to our church and, and other churches as well, when, when you seek a church to belong to, you ought to be listening for a voice, not looking for a church. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Don't sit under a voice that doesn't speak to you. Yeah. Something is off. Yeah. So if that person is hearing God for your life, you're going to hear it. Yeah. You're going to hear God. Yeah. And then then you're going to know, Bishop, the Lord used you today. Yeah. The Lord. Because you heard the Lord, not Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And Bishop got to have sense enough to give thanks to the Lord. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People mm-hmm. want to be all brilliant and receive all that for themselves. No. If you're walking with God, how do you know what to say to hundreds of people yeah. who have different needs? Yeah. Only a walk with God Only a gives walk you with a God. message that's going to minister to every last one of them wow. in a different place. Mm-hmm. Same word, different place. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow, wow, wow. Saints of God, I don't know how you feel, but this has been an incredible interaction, an incredible conversation. I am, I am, uh, I have a whole new level of appreciation for Enoch um, and, and his walk with God, and and mm. and and um, man, just so many nuggets of wisdom by our bishop. Bishop, would you, would you talk to that person who? has a new perspective on walking with God. Mm-hmm. Maybe they've been walking wrong or, or doing it wrong or mm-hmm. in the wrong mindset. Mm-hmm. Maybe they haven't recognized obedience as the conduit to pleasing God. My Lord. Can you just give a little bit of encouragement to those who are having a tough time in their walk with God? Absolutely. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Now, now hear this. Want to please God. Want to hear at the end, well done. Obedience is learned by Christ himself through the things that he suffered. So you're having a tough time walking with God because you're suffering and you don't think that has, you you think that's a contradiction. No, suffering is a part of walking with God. That's where we learn obedience. And then once we begin to walk in a life of obedience, amen, 
that then the blessings of fruit, the fruit of righteousness began to swarm your life. Walking with God, saints of God, means pleasing God. Be encouraged to love the things that God loves and to hate the things that God hates. He, he talks about that in, in the book of Proverbs. Google it. You'll see it. And practice them one day at a time. I'm going to love this one today. I'm going to learn how to love like Christ love. And don't be afraid that your walk has to be measured by some sense of success. You know, I work out. But I also have to eat right. And so sometimes I want my exercise to outshadow my poor eating choices till I learned that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. That's good. What I've got to learn as opposed to what the scale shows me, which is measurement, I've got to know if I'm doing as best I can today, Something on the inside is changing, whether it's reflected on the scale or not. If I leave sugar out of my diet today, something on the inside is changing, whether I see it right now or not. You got to stay the course, saints. You got to stay the course and you got to get up tomorrow. If you fail, you got to get up tomorrow and keep on trying it again. Find another way to please God. He, he outlines it. He outlines it clearly. Love your neighbor right today. You slipped a little bit yesterday. It's okay. Ask God for forgiveness. Get up and get back on track. So you ate that donut yesterday. Don't eat one today. Throw them out. Get them out your house. Then you don't have to think about them. Mm -hmm. And focus on those things that bring great joy to God. Stay in his presence. What does that mean, Bishop? I don't know what the presence of the Lord. Just sit and be still and say, Lord, speak to me. Let him wash you. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. You'll know it. You sit there and not say a word. All of a sudden, joy begins to overwhelm you. You'll know you're in the presence of God. And so we're learning how to practice being with God. Enoch had a complete communal relationship with God. He communed with him daily. And this is what we must do, even through the things that we don't quite understand. And if God answers you and you don't quite understand the answer, tell him. Lord, reveal it to me in another way. Lord, confirm it for me. I want to make sure I'm pleasing you. Don't worry about pleasing people. Please God and you will please others. Be encouraged tonight, saints of God. Enoch is a hero because he walked with God. Because he stayed with God. He endured under the weight of enormous pressure. Because he pleased God. Because he preached God's word. He's a hero. And we know the end of the story. He walked into heaven. Walking with God will lead you right into heaven. <laughs> And that's true for all of us. So be encouraged tonight. And I pray that this lesson has blessed your life and has opened up some things about walking with God that'll make your journey brighter and clearer. Amen. Amen. That is so awesome, Bishop. I, 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 I want to encourage you on tonight uh, by the words that Bishop spoke earlier. You might not feel like a hero, you might not feel like your life is worth much, like you've not accomplished anything great or big. But if you've had an encounter with God, mm. you qualify for heroism on tonight. That's right. So I want you to be encouraged that no matter where you are, receive the encounter with God. Some of your hearts are turning right now. Some of you say, I've been struggling with walking with God because I don't know him. You know, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And another they won't follow. Mm -hmm. And so you might be in that place tonight where you've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And so I'd like to invite you to be a part of the family. 
I want you to hear those words on Judgment Day when he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Giving your life to Christ and receiving him and receiving his salvation and his forgiveness is so simple, y'all. It's as simple as ABC. All you got to do is accept the fact that you're a sinner in need of a savior. Believe in your heart that he was crucified, dead, and buried, and he got up with all power in his hands. And see, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Call, he who calls on the name of the Lord shall. shall be saved. If you did that with us on tonight, I want you to show yourself. I want you to not be ashamed. I want you to type in the comments, I just received salvation. A member of our intake team will be certain to connect with you, to have prayer with you, and to walk you out in this Christian journey. Yes. Be encouragement to you. We appreciate you all spending your time with us on this evening. Bishop, I have enjoyed this moment. Praise God. This has been such an, an enlightening moment, and I'm so glad to be on the stage with your mother. Praise God. I'm so glad. glad. To, I'm glad to share it with you. I promise. Saints of God, you have heard it from the bishop's mouth. She is such a great speaker and has a way. You know, she talked about being able to have a word, speaking to 200 people, and the Lord using that word to touch everybody's life. Bishop does that every time. She opens her mouth, and we are privileged to have a shepherd who we know Hallelujah. walks with God. Praise God. Well, saints of God, we've got to go down from here. We invite you to come back and see us on next week. We're going to be here at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, and we'll be right back at, here next week at Bible Study Revamp. I am Pastor Renard Edwards. I'm Bishop Julia McMillan. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday morning and again next Wednesday. Y'all have a good night, and we'll see you soon. God bless you, saints.